Welcome to Discovery and welcome to another episode of Discovery. I got a few albums to share with you guys and there are new albums and there are also old albums as well. So I'm excited. Now before I start Discovery, pop your discoveries down below. You know what? Let's get on with the first album. First up is Majestic Downfall, Aorta. Now, in case you don't know, Majestic Downfall are a death doom band, and they are more of the doomy side than the death side, but this is just a fantastic band overall, which was released on May 21st. I fucking missed this one. Released independently is none other than an epic death doom album. There's just so much happening on this album. Some great guitar work and the vocals are so damn cavernous in tone. I just love how the songs just bleed onto each other. It, there are some great passages, some acoustic post passages as well. It's also quite proggy, but it's also slow pace. There are fast paced moments along with slow moments. Great songs like Roberta, which has a great guitar melody throughout this song. Great style and production. I love the drum fills on this and just the slow paced moments. It's got a strong reverb. The vocals are the main star on this. Each song is over 10 minutes long. We Become Eternal, one of the best closing songs of an album in 2021, running about 19 minutes. It's certainly a slow paced tempo song, but it really builds up throughout the conclusion and this is when you get a really infectious guitar lead like da -da 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 -da. that's so damn good reminds me of Iron Maiden in that times you can tell there are some heavy metal elements on this and some death metal moments but yeah a autumn majestic downfall is one of the best albums of 2021. Recently did a doom metal video. I'm kind of punching myself now because I wish I had this album, best doom metal videos, because this would easily be in the top five. But it's all thanks to uh, the Death Doom Metalhead who um, recommended this album. I subscribed to him. He's a great channel. And yeah, Majestic Downfall really took me by surprise. Go check out Majestic Downfall Aorta if you haven't already. It's just absolutely fantastic Death Doom. It just reminds me at times like Hooded Menace, old Hooded Menace style, where you get some really visceral, cold, dark, dense moments, and just some uplifting moments as well. Great album. My favorite song is probably Become Eternal, just because of the guitar lead. The melodies are quite infectious in tone. They do get stuck in your head, but yeah, this is an album that I've been playing a lot. So next up is an album that was released in 2007 on November 14th through Fire Doom Music. We got Coliseum Chapter 1 Delirium. And holy shit, more doom for you. More doom up your ass. And this is an incredible Funeral Doom album. The atmosphere is so damn thick and dense. It just feels like it's crushing, 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 crushing until your balls are crushed in the mush. It's just an incredible ride. The gate of a dar, the vocals, got songs like Weathered, Saturnine Vastus, Delirium to end off the album. Each song runs averages around about 10 minutes. The crushing guitar, the crushing drums. This as this is an incredible fucking album by Coliseum. It really is. And unfortunately, I did a little bit of research. Apparently, the lead singer died, and Coliseum were no more. But holy shit, Chapter One Delirium is just an incredible ride. It is so damn dark. The atmosphere is dense and just. Thick, thick with dust. Coliseum Chapter 1 Delirium is so damn good. Check it out. Next up, we got a brand new black metal album, Nifgraf, Visions of White Mountains. The artwork is just weird, but uh, I'll tell you what, Nifgraf is a band to be reckoned with. Nifgraf are a synth dungeon black metal band, you could say. And the vocals are so damn raw and visceral in tone, but you get some beautiful, beautiful melodies, beautiful epic moments and beautiful instrumentals 
to accompany the really harsh and aggressive vocals. At times the vocals remind me from Isoc Trillium. It's a vocal tone and his vocals are quite unique. They really are. Oh god, the melodies, man, are so damn infectious. This is my favorite album. My favorite album of August at the moment. It's just because the melodies are so damn infectious. They're so damn catchy. Songs like Buried in Frozen Skies, Lost Among Storms, Visions of White Mountains. I just feel that the first album, Communication, which was released in 2020, is a little bit better than Visions of White Mountains. The song Safety Stone, which has an incredible melody that just gets stuck in your head. But I just love how they repeat the same old melodies. Very similar to the band Fire and Holt, which is my favorite album of the year at the moment and they just repeat the same old melodies and i just love nifgraf nifgraf just have a nick for it a nick for melodies that just get stuck in your fucking head and after you listen to it you sometimes sing the fucking melodies over and over again very similar to fire and Holt's, uh, album except nifgraf is a much more lighter sort of black metal album but this is also not as epic as fire and Holt or even sickle of dust but it's just got some synthy, wavy, black metal up your ass, and it's just such a good fucking album. Next up is we go back to 1992. We got Solitude Eternus, Beyond the Crimson Horizon. It's all thanks to my buddy, Coeste Fomadol, who actually showed me this album. And yeah, this album's so damn good. The lead vocalist, Robert Lowe, who was also in Candlemas, created the band Solitude Eternus, and he basically created his own legacy. Great songs like Black Castle, The Final Scene, It Came Upon One and Night. Songs like Plague of Procreation. What an incredible album it is. Great guitar work, amazing solos. It's just fantastic fucking epic doom. It just reminds you of Candlemas, just because the overall vocals, the overall slow paced tempo of the album. This is some fantastic heavy metal as well. Brilliant song compositions, love the passages and each song just flows like water. It really does. The final scene being one of my favorite songs of the album, along with the Hourglass and Beyond is a great way to end off the album. I mean, this album is so damn good. I'm just recently exploring Solitude Eternus and Beyond the Crimson Horizon is my first album by them. And I thought this was a very solid album. This was released through Roadrunner Records as well, released in 1992. And this is a classic epic doom album in the doom genre and yeah i just realized that most of these albums on discovery are doom hmm interesting next up we got some more black metal an album that really took me by surprise and it is a depressive suicidal black metal album which was released august 6 2021 released independently you can listen to it on black metal promotions as well we got we met catharsis this is this is just a very good album. This is incredibly dark. There's just so much torture within his vocals. And the reason why I love listening to this album is because of his vocals. There are some great guitar melodies. It's the production's very raw as well. It is one of my favorite albums of the month already. There's just been some really good black metal albums this month. And yeah, We Met Catharsis really took me by surprise. Sooked is being 10 minutes long to start off. Interesting crescendo to kick off the album. And in the songs like Thagi, which is a great instrumental. Trib, which is seven minutes. And Ich bin etwas wert. Oh! What a way to end off this fucking album. This album is very melodic. It's quite melodic, especially Ich bin it was vert. It's very sing-alongable. <laughs> Dare I say, it's very sing-alongable. This is up to be one of the best DSP albums along with Sanguining and also Suicide Forest Reluctantly. We Met Catharsis is up there to be the best DSP album of the year. So damn good. Check out Catharsis. And finally, next up is Tyranny Tides of Awakening, which was released in 2005 through Fire Doom Music, same as Coliseum. When I said Col Coliseum was monstrous, this album is fucking a million times monstrous than Coliseum. This is just a thick, layered, doomy, obscure 
skewered, apprehensive, vehement tides of awakening is it is so damn monstrous. The vocals are so damn fucking intense. They really are. It is one of the most slowest albums I've heard. Songs like Coalescent of the Inhumane Awareness, which has a really slow, doomy guitar riff. The vocals. <laughs> That's what he fucking sounds like upon the war-torn shape of cold earth, which gets even slower. This is an indie arcane class of unwritten hours, which is like 15 minutes. And then to end off the album, you get a really eerie instrumental entreaties to the prime evil chaos. Wow. Wow, that's all I can say. This is just an incredible album. We're in about now in six minutes. It certainly will awaken you. Tides of Awakening is one of the best, one of the best classic albums in the 21st century, in my opinion. It really took me by surprise. I've listened to a lot of Funeral Doom throughout my life, and yet Tyranny Tides of Awaken really, really took me by surprise. Very similar to the album Coliseum, however, I think that Tyranny is much more dark and much more malevolent. Mal 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 is much more malevolent as well. It's just the overall vocals. The overall vocals are so damn monstrous and the overall instrumentals, the compositions are so damn intense as well. Tyranny, Tides of Awakening is just an insane album overall. And it's all thanks to my buddy, Captain Shitfist. Anyway, that's it for Discovery. Hope you did enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below your favorite discoveries on Discovery. And also let me know your and let me know what you discovered as well in the comments below. So that's it. I hope you did enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one.